I feel incredibly lucky to earn that salary. And, you know, I don't take that for granted. But I will also say, me and John, who is referenced in the piece, every member of our organization actually, has we've gone months where we didn't get paid at all. I mean, I floated this organization personally for months and months before we were able to actually pay ourselves. So that was Crystal Ball, the founder of the People's House Project. This week, she was the subject of a brutal story in McClatchy that went over the finances of her nascent organization and asked the question, is Crystal Ball running a scam pack or is Crystal Ball reinventing how campaigns can be run on the Democratic side? The essential charge that McClatchy is making is that Crystal Ball and her deputy are paying themselves with the money they're raising instead of spending it on candidates. People's House Projects, basically, it finds working class candidates uh, and endorses them uh, in house, house races or house uh, races. Only, only house races yep. and then helps uh, get them elected. Yep. So w what's the kind of the first response to the charge that, hey, too much money f that you're getting in went to you and to your deputy rather than to these candidates? Right. So the charge is essentially that, you know, we just are raising money, paying ourselves and not really doing anything or providing any value to the candidates. And in fairness, we are a different model. You know, I believe very strongly that while money is important in these races, it's not always the most important or most essential thing, especially the kind of candidates that we're talking about. I'm talking about, you know, former Teamster, um, a roofer, an, an iron worker, um, a lot of teachers, veterans. They are deeply connected in their district. They're incredibly talented candidates. They don't have access to money. They don't have access to um, political networks. They don't have access to media networks. So our goal is to come in early and to give them that first boost up the ladder. So I'll give you one example of, of what we do just so you can see kind of how our model works. Um, Richard Ojeda, 24-year Army veteran, four tours, Iraq and Afghanistan. He's kind of a rising national star now. And he's running in this very challenging district in southern West Virginia. Um, Trump won it, I think. He got 70% of the vote there. And when we first met Richard back in the summer, I met him at a uh, United Mine Workers Labor Day picnic. Um, I could tell that he was an incredibly compelling candidate from the way that people responded to him. But the message that we got back from the party is, this guy can't win, he doesn't know how to raise money, we've got this other candidate in who's an establishment pick, backed by Joe Manchin, you're backing the wrong guy. And so we came in early for Richard, we helped him with fundraising, direct dollars into his account, we helped introduce him to political connections, we helped get him media, he was on you know, HBO, Vice News Tonight, thanks to us. So we gave him a lot of lift and then he just won his primary. Um, he actually got more votes than all the Republicans combined. So that's kind of how we work. We're not a direct conduit of funds. That's never what our goal has been. It's been to be really hands-on and on the ground with these candidates. So to get back to your question, what's the response? The response is ask the candidates. I mean, this, you know, every one of our candidates describes our support and our help as invaluable, a godsend, et cetera, et cetera. So to me, that's the metric that I've always been shooting for. I haven't been doing this for the donor class. I haven't been doing it for the political establishment, certainly. I've been doing it to support these candidates. So if they're happy, then I'm pretty right. happy. And so you're, you're an interesting person to be doing this because you have connections with the party. Like you ran for Congress yourself right. uh, yep. as a host, uh, you know, as a pundit. You, you met a lot of these people in the green room. So when you, you know, you're, you get your calls returned. In, yes, or you used sometimes. to at least. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so, talk, so talk about the Richard Ojeda situation. For, yeah. For, so you, so you identify this guy. Yep. Um, who, by the way, if people haven't checked him, checked him out, he's he's amazing. He's like the he's most amazing. exciting candidate running across the country, as well as HBO. There was this great Politico profile yes. of him that was a lot of fun. They called Crystal's him actually in JFK with tattoos and a bench press. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, he's he's hard to describe, so people should just check him out. So you identify yeah. him. Did you go to the party? Go to Washington and say like, hey, here is a guy who can actually win this district. He's wildly different than anything you've seen before yeah. but he's a state senator right then he went yeah. state senator with like thirty dollars he won his state senate yeah. seat on forty eight hundred dollars and they say well we've got this other guy they lost this district by 40 points last time 
yet they're going to do the same plan again. So who was this person that they said, well, this is who we think is a smarter candidate right. in our 40-point loss wisdom? Well, and I don't even know that it was that there was any thought as to this guy is the one that could win. It was, well, this is the guy. He's right, the right. it's not even about winning. It's just this is the guy, <laughs> so, yes. right? And yes. um, so he was the mayor of Huntington, um, and he was, you know, tied into Joe Manchin and had – much more significant fundraising ability than Richard did when we first met Richard. And he did, in fact, outraise Richard, I think, four to one. Um, but he ended up having to drop out of the race because the facts on the ground were just such that Richard had so much momentum, even though he was getting out fundraised, that there was just no way this guy could credibly continue. Which goes back to the idea that money matters. You have to be able to communicate. That's all true. But the party has been so exclusively focused on money that they've missed out on candidates like Richard Ojeda. They've missed out on candidates you know, that we're supporting, Alonzo Pennington in Kentucky's first congressional, Mariah Phillips in Tennessee, these incredible mm -hmm. people who know their community, right? They don't need a DC consultant to tell them how to talk about progressive values in their community because they've, they've lived it. They know right. how to do it. They just need, they need a boost up that first rung of the ladder, and then they take off. So we also were early supporters of Randy Bryce, right? Mm -hmm perfect example of our model and we were behind him before he even got in the race um, so before he had his incredible launch video that made him into a national superstar we were behind him and at that time people would have said well this is crazy you're going up against the speaker of the house you're an iron worker like how this is not going to work and well, I want to go back to a jet in a second yeah but what did like for instance what did you do for Bryce like what what does that mean to go in early and, and help one of these candidates? You know, with Randy, it really was mostly a confidence thing um, because he took off so quickly that now, I mean, he doesn't need, he's, he's raised tons of money, right. he's doing awesome, the speakers drop down, you know. So he, we, ha we have not been as hands-on with because he just hasn't needed the help. But like with Ojeda, we placed op-eds. We helped him set up his fundraising operation. We took him to California and set up meetings for him. We held right. fundraisers for him here. We've got him booked on, I got him booked on HLN yesterday. I mean, anything right. that they need help with, we're in almost constant contact with the campaign to help problem solve, fill in the gap, whatever they need, we're on the ground to do with them. Right. And here, here's a quote from Ojeda from the Politico story to let people know the kind of candidate we're talking about so this is a guy in deep in deep in coal country yeah he's talking to a, a group of striking teachers here and he was kind of talked about as the kind of a leader of the he was teachers strike really. we are on the next saudi arabia they've said that the energy people have said that so if we're on the next saudi arabia obviously they want it to be just like saudi arabia where you have about 10 people driving around in lamborghinis and everybody else eating sand sandwiches that's what they want guess what no and then he says, I don't give a shit about big energy. So this, this, this is not <laughs> kind of the old school, democratic, coal friendly, pro-life, I'm less bad than the Republican, but I'm a Democrat kind of approach. This is, this is in your face. Absolutely in your face. I mean, he's very much an FDR kind of a Democrat. Um, he talks a lot. He, he really was truly the, the spark for the teacher strike. He gave a viral floor speech um, and was the first one to call for them to walk out. And they rallied around him like crazy, you know, t-shirts with his face on it, Ojeda 2020 signs. Here's a guy who served our country, was nearly killed, I think, five different times in Iraq and Afghanistan, came home to Logan County, West Virginia, thinking he was going to live happily ever after. And he really felt that the lives that were lost overseas, his men, were lost in sense in vain because the country wasn't what he thought it was when an entire generation in his community had been lost to the opioid crisis, when there was no hope and opportunity there. And so that's what sparked him. It wasn't ambition. It wasn't, I want to see myself um, you know, on TV or in the news. It was I have to do something so that the names of these men who he has tattooed on his back who lost their lives, that that, that wasn't in vain. And I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, he's going to win in November. I mean, I can promise, like, he's going to win in November. Um, in an R plus 23 district, which means it performs 23 points more Republican than, you know, the nation at large, Trump country, central, 70% of the vote for Trump, he's going to win there. And people ask me why. And it's, it's just as simple as he stands with the people. You won another 
primary on Tuesday yes. night. Dee Dee uh, Adams. Dee Dee Adams. And actually, it was there. There was another the P Triple C, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, which is founded about ten years ago to back. Yep lefty candidates so they backed a different candidate in yep. the district did she outraise the candidate you backed how that how this how that race go down? no i think our candidate outraised um that candidate i believe um so our candidate is a woman named Dee, Dee adams um this is a western north carolina district so it's winston-salem it's a little it's rural it's mountains virginia fox who uh, a lot of your viewers may know is the congresswoman who's awful. Um, and Dee Dee is a lifelong resident of the area. She was a teamster when she graduated college. There were no, there were no professional white collar jobs. So she went to work in the Schlitz Brewery, putting the lid on the can of beer. And she's an African-American woman. Her name is Denise. Um, and when she went to apply for her first white collar job, she changed her resume to be Dee Dee so that they couldn't tell she was a woman. And when she got the call back, they said, is Mr. Adams here? And she said, well, no, but Ms. Adams is. And that's how she got, that's how she got a white collar job. Um, she's a long time, she's been a city councilwoman there. And she's been incredible in terms of, you know, dealing with food deserts and really fighting for underserved communities there. And what did you guys do for her? So, and also let's, yeah, to, to tie it to the McClatchy story that was written about you guys, the question in the McClatchy piece is, is is this a scam pack or is it a legitimate operation that right. is redefining what it means to be a pack? Scam packs are a very real thing. These are yes. political action committees that well, they're formed as political action committees, and they buy buy up email lists and and they do mailers and they basically fleece well-meaning people out of money, both yes. on the right and the left. Yes, the the right has a ton of them. They raise all this money. And they just keep the money. Right. And Don't do anything for anyone. Just keep the money for themselves. Right. And then if and if you talk to the candidates that they say that they have helped. Right. They they usually have never heard of the operation. Correct. They, they don't. And you can't find human beings usually even behind these things. So that that was the question raised about yours because of the salary that was getting paid to you and and your, and your director. So. That's why I asked the question, what were you doing for... Um, for Didi. For Didi. So Didi, a um, couple things we did for her, just as examples. So I went before her first candidate forum and worked with her on her answers, prepped her for debate. Um, I wrote speeches for her. I helped them with you know local media coverage. Um, we did help them some with fundraising, and we did also contribute. We maxed out to them. Um, between the direct contributions and the in-kind contributions. And then right before the primary, I went and was on the ground. I you know, went with her to the convention and helped her there. Um, I did a rally with her the night before. Um, we went to a fundraiser after that. And then my executive director, John Moffat, who's also mentioned in the piece, he actually went to North Carolina and knocked 400 doors on election day. So, I mean, just on a weekly, if not daily basis, we're in touch with these campaigns, helping them strategize, helping them make connections, and and being just you know another advisor, um, and try to troubleshoot with everything that they're doing. I mean, we I talked to them today about okay, now that you've won, what are next steps, and what's the campaign team we need to get in place, and who do we know, and who can we send you resumes of? I mean, just literally everything. So, to your question of if it's a scam pack, the candidates would be like, we never heard of these people. This reporter reached out to most, if not all, of our candidates, and every one of them described us as indispensable, invaluable, a godsend. So again, to me, that's the metric. That's the metric that matters. So that's the kind of thing that you do f for candidates. Yes. And so for that, your salary is about one hundred eighty thousand dollars. The executive director is about one hundred twenty thousand. Yep. How does that compare to other people at that level of political campaigning? Uh, you know, after, when he started digging, I said, okay, well, let me look around and see what the comparable would be. And I was, you know, when he wrote me, he, he said, I make more than a staffer, which I took some offense at because right. I'm not a staffer. I'm the president and founder of this organization. A staffer on the Hill or something? A, or? He just said a staffer. Okay. <laughs> and when I spoke with him on the phone, um, which I recorded, um, he said, well, you know, this is what a low level staffer makes. So I was just taking a look at the uh, FEC filings of the People's House Project, and uh, I just had some questions, I guess, about how some of the money is being spent uh, that that you've raised. So first of all, we were unable to pay ourselves for several months during the um, 
launch of the, you know, of the organization. So uh, the first quarter was the first time we had the money to pay ourselves and pay ourselves back. Okay. But um, I'm also curious, you know, you mentioned that you had looked at organizations and uh, other staffers who, sure. you know, earn different salaries. I'm just wondering who you looked at. I mean, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm thinking of like 10 years worth of looking at FEC forms um, and the salaries that staffers draw there usually, I mean, most low level staffers, I was looking through some yesterday, they earn between, you know, a couple grand a month. Um, and I mean, usually not much more than that. Uh, consultants can be different. Um, and do you, do you typically consider a founder and president to be a low level staffer? Not a low level staffer, but I mean, like, for instance, campaign managers on campaigns usually don't make that much money. When I looked at the comparables of what other PAC directors make, I made less than anyone else I could find. He did mention one that he said you'd flagged for him. I sent him a bunch. Making he cherry-picked that one. Making more than a million dollars. Yeah, and, um, and it's a larger organization. Right. Fine. But I literally didn't find anyone who was making um, less than me. Okay, so it's a large organization. Uh, great. But that yeah. doesn't mean you're necessarily working doing more work. harder and doing more work. Like, yes. Okay. And there seems to be this idea in our country that, well, you sit atop a pile of cash. So, therefore, you should be able to take a huge portion of that cash home. When they're when sitting the, in an office cutting ads or just doling out checks, right. what we're are you on actually, the ground. What are you actually doing for that? And there's yeah. separately a, an idea in this country that, well, if you're working class, um, you shouldn't you shouldn't be getting paid. Yeah. Um, There's also you know, an idea that if you're yeah. a woman, you shouldn't be getting paid. Well, yeah, eighty one percent of. You know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so true, you're, true. You're allowed to you're allowed to have eighty one eighty one percent. Sounds fair. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like there's an idea like, well, okay, this Republican guy is, he's working with billionaires, so he should be siphoning a lot off the top. But you're working with working class people, so they're therefore, um, no, there should be no money involved. And yeah. the, the consequence of that, the function of that is that people don't do that work then. And, yeah. so, and so then the work, working class candidates don't, don't get help. Don't have anybody. And my candidates were asked directly about my salary and they were all like, she's been great, I have no problem with it. I mean, we don't cost them any money. You know, and our, our donors know what they were funding. They didn't think they were, they would be mad if I was just funneling their money directly to their candidates. They can give money directly to candidates. They don't need me for that. They need our organization because we are finding these candidates and helping them, elevating them to start with. So, I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to be dismissive. I feel incredibly lucky to earn that salary. And, you know, I don't take that for granted. But I will also say, me and John, who is referenced in the piece, every member of our organization actually, has, we've gone months where we didn't get paid at all. I mean, I floated this organization personally for months and months before we were able to actually pay ourselves a salary. So, you know, I, I think it's, this is my full-time job. Um, I love getting to do this work. I love it. I love these candidates. It is like the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my entire life. But the reality is I'm not in a position to do it for free. I'm just not. So this is my full-time job and, and yeah, I'm, I'm paid a salary for it. And I think the, the answer will come in the results. Um, yeah, that's not typically the case in politics. Normally, yeah. what if the, whatever the results are don't matter. You know, you yep. you lose as a consultant. You go on and you work on the next campaign, and there are there are no consequences. Yep. Um, but this that's is a so case true. since people are watching. This is a case where they're going to hold us to account. You're going to hold us to account, and it, and but I if you welcome win, that. Right. If you win, it shows that maybe you don't have to raise that amount of money maybe there's another way to actually go about winning winning a race